Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is the next edition of the JB and Steel Show, as we're here to give you the latest and the greatest on the NHL, NFL. And then if we have some time at the end, we'll cover some NBA action with you as well. Um, but let's first get into the recency around the NHL and um, what's going on there. And something that um, we found interesting between a few teams, because there's quite a bunch of teams being the Dallas Stars and one of them that got screwed by the refereeing at the end of the game yesterday, I must say, against St. Louis. But um, they're a team that would be in the playoffs if they were even minutely close to being as good on the road as they are at home because they're killer at home, 13-3-1. As Steel brought it up before the podcast, ended the Penguin streak at home, and then unfortunately lost again. That wasn't really necessarily on them. But at the same time, one of their issues on the road is not scoring enough. So they could have still yeah. scored more goal. And that would have helped uh, the fact of the refs being able to screw you at the end of a game. But either way, you have to be better than 4 10 and 1 at the road. You got to get that going. Uh, Bonus had every right to be as pissed as he was yesterday after that because you, you can't make two calls like that at the end of a game. Yeah, that's. that's... But. You have to be much better again still scoring. You got to get it going on the road. That loss, though, was kind of thrown in the trash can because of how it happened. But other losses on the road, you really got to um, pick it up and do your thing, just like you're doing at home. Exactly. And first of all, thank you all very much for checking us out. This is uh, volume eight of the JB and Steel Show. How you doing, buddy? Doing well, doing well. But, yeah, you can go just dive in. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Because I feel like they're a fun defensive-oriented, have a good defensive. Yeah, I, I've been really uh, – Rupe Hintz has been playing well. Um, really liked what Dallas has been doing. But, yeah, you're right. Four and ten on the road is not getting it done. And when you get to the playoffs, you need to be able to win on the road because you're going to play half of the games on the road anyway. Whether you're at the home team or not, if you're going to five, if you're going to five games, you're going to play at least two of those games on the road. You know what I mean? So you better be better than four and ten on the road, I would think. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, I like what they're doing. I, I, I was a little bit surprised what they did in goal, but then I wasn't because of how well goaltending has been there. Do you know what I mean? Where Hudobin was. Ottinger, um, you, do you mean kind of letting Holpe be the mentor to Ottinger now instead of instead of Hudobin? Yeah, Hudobin. I mean, I think <clears throat> I think that I guess they signed Holpe. I guess in retrospect to have more another goaltender than whoever emerged because I don't think they expected Holpe to be as good as he is this year. Kind of rebounding, being similar, not the same Holpe as we once saw, but coming back to being a very good. Goaltender, yeah. and now they have two, one of the best youngsters in Jay Goddinger. Yeah. And now you have Hopi playing at that level. And mm. then um, from everything I've read, and then Kevin Weeks brought it up, but I, from things I read on the athletic end score, it seems like other teams are interested and in NHL trade rumors in um, Padobin. So they're probably end up getting like a middle round pick for him or something. And then he'll go he on to they, be a backup for yeah, the team. Yeah, because he, he went, they, they put him on waivers, uh, Hudobin. They yeah, he's him. with the team stores now since he cleared waivers yeah yeah so okay. he's been playing on in the uh ahl but if he gets picked up he'll be back in the nhl probably with somebody as their uh, second yeah i would not surprise me at all and and, and to be honest with you though um it, that was i i watched that game uh the 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 dallas pittsburgh game i i watched that game i watched them beat pittsburgh and they played so well they looked like a well-oiled team they they played good in all aspects of the game power play penalty kill the whole nine yards goaltending yep. was great defense was great and and then they get on the road and it's like you know you just crumble it up and exactly. throw it in the trash <laughs> just said it, i released my uh new year report on them today uh because i just started having the thinking juices going when i was watching that game yesterday even though, again, that game was thrown in the trash can because of the way they lost base yeah, and because the refs a little bit. But, you know, look, um, here's the thing, though, they, Joe. They here's the to thing, be, though. You know, here's the thing, though. You said it. It doesn't matter what the refs say or do. It doesn't matter what we feel about what the refs do. It does None of that stuff matters. What matters is the team should have been better so they didn't have to worry about the referees making a okay. bad call exactly. or, or, or things but like I that. Still, 
You know what I mean? You said it earlier. Exactly. You touched on it earlier. You know what I mean? Exactly. But to wrap up the <clears throat> talk, stars, the other thing you have, they have to worry about is Klingberg wants to be traded. So you yeah. got to get the right asset for John Klingberg since he's not going to be on the team next year anyway. That's yeah. going to have a huge impact on your playoff successes as well, what you get back for that. So that's going to be interesting to see. Or do you just tell him, we're still pushing for the playoffs this year. You can just go in free agency wherever you want, and then you just keep him for the rest of the season, hoping you do well with him. That's a huge risk because then you would want to do pretty mm -hmm. solid so you actually don't care about not getting anything back from him. That's why I think at this point with the start, they might as well just get the best assets because you're going to get good stuff for Klingberg, bring in another good, say, young defenseman and maybe a forward or a young defenseman and pick, and that's going to help you out um, for now and in the future. You're going to get someone that's NHL ready for John Klingberg. And you I mean, can get an NHL ready prospect for John Klingberg. That's a good defenseman. Right. They are right now currently sitting in 12th in the conference. Okay. Yeah. Got although points are really close and they have a yeah. couple games in hand because they only played 32, which is. Mm -hmm. The big thing to focus on this year, just like it was in the last year. Right. So coach. when you look at like, so what? So now you change it to say like winning percentage, because winning percentage gives you the exact, because it's based off of the number of games you play, how you win, whatever, whatever. Yeah, they have a higher winning percentage than the three teams above them. That still puts them. I get. <laughs> That puts them in eighth place in the West. If you, oh yeah, cause they even have a higher winning percentage than the Kings. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even yeah. see that. Yeah, right. right. So that puts them in eighth place if you do it by winning percentage. All right. Unfortunately, they do it by points. So that's just kind of how that works out. But like I said, I mean, if you take away that, maybe that's the reason they do it by points because of the roots. Well, <laughs> listen, if you take away the, if. But if you take away those 10 losses that they had on the road. They've been a very good team. That's the thing. Yeah, if they can get, go on, 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 on home or on road ice, I mean, like they have been on home ice. Don't, maybe that's, that, that's why I made the joke. Maybe that's why they don't do it by points per Because then you, you can know, be great yeah. at one thing. Yeah. You actually be a, a solid spot. For I mean, they're not necessarily the worst. Uh, well, they're one of the worst road teams because Arizona is Detroit four is four and eleven. Yeah, and and yeah, Seattle, four right? And Seattle is not that good either. They're four and well, eight. The other team I, I was actually, um, you kind of foreshadowed a team that I was going to bring up later. Um, Detroit was one of the teams I was going to bring up later because they would be significantly better than five hundred. And um, actually, yeah. in the wild card spot over the Boston Bruins, if they were somewhat consistent on the road and not literally like the worst team down there with the Arizona Coyotes, who yeah, were four and eleven, four eleven and four, two on the road yeah, is not like, yeah. Arizona's four eleven and one maybe. No, they're also four eleven and two. They're both four. Yeah, both. Four. Yeah, both. Are, so you yeah, don't yeah. Put with Arizona when you're at the end of your rebuild. You have Cider. Uh, you got all these exciting players on your team that are trending in the right direction. Um, you uh, obviously uh, don't want to be at that point uh, still on the road. So if they can get that trending, they're another team because obviously they got Nadelkovich in goal, which was a very good pickup. And the big thing he does, too, is he takes a lot of pressure off the defense. There's an article of people that subscribe to The Athletic. If you type in Alex Nadelkovich, it should come up. It's about how yeah. he's like one of the best puck handling goaltenders and how good that is because it takes so much pressure off the defense if you're really effective at doing that. Exactly. And he is one of those guys. And he becomes like really another helps. defenseman. Exactly. It's a, it helps those young defensemen that are with Detroit so much because yeah. they don't have to worry about trying to come behind like with the Flyers who, no offense to Carter Hart, but he's not necessarily the best puck playing defenseman or defenseman, uh, goaltender. No. Um, and neither is Martin Jones. So like, you have guys that have to come around the net and have to try to play the puck uh, because your goal, we can't do it. If you're Horonic, if you're Letty, if you're Sider, you guys don't, you don't have to do that. And why do you think Mark Stahl is actually having a better season 
um, as a veteran with their team pride because his goaltender takes a lot of pressure off of a guy that really can't handle the puck that well exactly. at this point of his career like he used to do. All he has to do is just be a solid, steady defenseman, like he, it, which is always should be a, set, a sixth or seventh at this point, and he's been their sixth and doing well. But you got the pizzazz on offense. You got uh, – Zadina, you got Fabry, you got uh, Raymond Larkin, uh, Bertuzzi, um, you got guys, and then you have Sider, obviously, and Heronic on defense, plus, uh, like They're I coming. said, Stahl, Oscar, well, like, you have guys that are coming, to Delkovich is another very good young goaltender, now at 26, Grise doing better as a backup would help a lot, too, because yeah. he's still not that great, so that's something you might want to look to add, potentially, um, if you are going to try to push to be a wild card team and make this be a year that you get your experience for the young guys in the playoffs, no matter what happens type of wow. thing, and be the wild card team instead of Boston, who's starting to age, uh, then you would, I think, might want to get a better backup goaltender. Right. But now let's let's throw something else here into the mix, too. Detroit is... 30 29 is a 29 difference in the goal differential. Boston is plus 11 where Detroit is minus 23. Do you know what I mean? In the goal differential department. So that, oh, that yeah, yeah. that's they a big, also have an interesting young because they have a guy that's done really good in the AHL and ECHL. Um, had one game with Detroit before. Uh, I think it was because of injuries in 1819. I have no idea why he honestly played a game after coming out of a uh, Hamilton Bulldog um, then. But uh, he's um, only 23 years old now, Caden Fulcher. But yeah, he would be like, he's a guy that they would have to kind of rush up just like we've seen other goaltenders have to be rushed up this year if they have to play like NFL and different other people. So I wouldn't do that, but that's a name that's starting to look at maybe as a backup to Nadelkovich for the future because by the time he comes up, Nadelkovich is going to be 27, 28. He's kind of a guy right. that can show ropes at that point in time. And then exactly. they can just have a cheap, almost like a Gordy of backup. Like how go. the Rangers have, so they have a cheaper backup because he kind of just profiles as a very good, backup and maybe starter that's why like he hasn't really necessarily been the one to be traded to another team because he profiles as more of that like james reimer they can be a good starter but they're like not necessarily always like the guarantees or the jonathan bernier's in earlier in his career he could be a starter but yeah. not necessarily the guarantee like he kind of profiles more in that category exactly exactly so Either way, though, I mean, the, the fact that we've got all this stuff going on in, in the NHL right now where there are still a lot of games that are being postponed. And and I'm, I'm not just talking about the um, I'm not just talking about the uh, Canadian games, because a lot of those games are postponed because of attendance issues. OK, but the. The, re, the Tampa Bay and New Jersey is being is postponed. Okay, uh, now the the Blue Jackets Montreal that's postponed. Uh, Minnesota Winnipeg that's postponed. Those are Canadian games uh, that are postponed. So yeah, we knew that because of the yeah. um, attendance stuff. But yeah, exactly. I mean that's something with Canada is going to happen for a while. With here, it seems like it'll happen for probably three to four more weeks potentially. And then and that's if we're going by London and the way that other places' trajectories have gone. It'd probably be like another three-week stretch. And then by that time, you start seeing some downturn in certain areas as other places are still kind of hot. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully when that happens. But again, um, I'd say that I guess we'll see what we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, happens over time. Yeah, I mean that's kind of that's kind of basically the only thing that they they can do, and that's kind of only that basically all that we can do too. Do you know what I mean? Is is we can just you know we we can only hit what's pitched, right? You know what I mean? And yeah, that's why that's why I kind of wanted to just talk about the differences of the teams because also. A team that fits a little bit in that category, granted, they only played 14 games on the road this far, 
in their 35 games is Florida because they are gr- a great overall team, but they could have pulled way ahead of Tampa if they mm. were better than five or five on the road. Like That's they true. would not be, it would not be 51 51 right now. Uh, they would be in a good spot because the difference is Tampa's good in both spots. They're 12 4 and 3, um, and then 11 5 and 2, uh, the Tampa Bay. So they're actually good in both spots. And then both teams are 6 3 and 1 in the last 10. So both teams are staying with each other. But if Florida could have pulled away earlier, by doing better in their first 14 road games, they could have been four, six, whatever points ahead of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and it wasn't going to be looking like this potential gruesome, which is going to be fun to watch, but this great battle which is going to have more fighting than usual between the Battle of Florida because of the way it's going to get in the end. But they could have been a little bit more ahead of that tide at this point if they were another one of the teams that were not a little bit spotty in their first, say, 14 to whatever games these teams at 14 to 17 or whatever the list of these games. Exactly. Exactly. And here's the other thing too, that makes this um, maybe a little bit more of an issue here with Florida and bodes well for Tampa Bay during that stretch, Tampa Bay was missing key points of their, or key players of their, of their team. Uh, you, You know what I mean? During during this key stretch here, where you know they still managed to go eleven five and two on the road and twelve four and three at home, whereas Florida is like you said five four and five in the away category. Do you know what I mean? So it bodes more well. It bodes well more so for Tampa Bay than it does for Florida moving forward because Tampa Bay had all those guys missing. Now those guys are starting to come back. Where Florida didn't have any of those, I mean, they had Barkoff there, but and they had a couple guys, but for the most part, it wasn't like they were missing, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would agree, but, but Florida, I think, has been missing a couple people, but it hasn't been to the extremity of. But th- Bay, I yeah. think it's just both of those teams. I think it's going to go down to the wire, and I don't think either are going to fall from being towards that top three. And then you, of course, have Toronto that uh, is pushing uh, uh, behind them there in the Atlantic Division uh, with 47 points. Uh, but I, I think that they're the pretty safe otherwise because Boston is 38, 36, and then it drops all the way to 26 uh, with right. Buffalo. In the- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So but then, but then you got... Be Florida's to the end unless if Toronto can pick up like their pace by about three points or so um and kind of keep tabs with them a little bit better which they could because the big thing with toronto is they're also started solid on the road eight four and two very good yeah and have only played 33 games to the 37 and 35 of florida so toronto could really make that up in their if they can win those games at hand i'm with you on that and you know what else too toronto has also kept pace uh, they are six two and two uh, in their last yeah. ten, right? Okay, yeah, so they're they've... all like kind of in that same. Yeah. Spot. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But the only problem, though, is that Toronto has played f- f- two, three, three games less than Tampa Bay. Four games less than Tampa Bay. Yeah. And two games less than Florida. But mm-hmm. they are not even, they're sixth in the conference. Washington's ahead of them by two points. The Rangers ahead of them. And Carolina are ahead of them. The conference, I'm just looking, if you win the games at hand in the Atlantic, well, you would make up room in the conference too. But uh, you were, you're, you're going to, you have the games at hand against your own division that if you start winning those games, you're going to be right there locked in with uh, Tampa Bay and Florida because you, you just yeah. have to win those games. That's the big yeah. thing. Yeah. You can't be oh. losing the games at hand. You have If you win them, though, you're kind of – then it becomes a three-way battle where Boston and or Detroit would really have to catch up to be not in the wild card conversation and get more in the – top three of the Atlantic, which I don't see either getting to that point. I think I, one of those teams is going to be a wild card team. You know, yeah. I'm uh, be, Just because of how it's shaking up right now, 
you got Carolina and the Rangers both at 50, and then you got Florida and Tampa Bay both at 51. So that's essentially your top four right there, right? Then you got Washington at five with 49 points. Then you got Pittsburgh at six with 45 points. Then you got Toronto at seven with 47 points. Or I'm sorry, Toronto's at, at six, and then Pittsburgh is at seven with 45. So, I mean, they're ahead of Pittsburgh, but – and they're taking seven teams, right? Or they're, they're taking eight teams. For, on my thing, it says Pittsburgh's at 10th in the league. 10th in the league. Well, I'm looking at it more from – because the easier way to look at it, I think, on the standings to know who's in the playoffs is just look at it under – because it shows you the top three in the division who they take. And then the wild card teams by that. They, then, they take the top four for each division, right? Three. Oh, the top three. Okay. Yeah, the top three of each. Like right now, the top three guaranteed in the Atlantic are Florida, Tampa, Toronto. And then Metropolitan would be Carolina, New York, Washington. In Washington. Okay. The wild card would be Pittsburgh with 45 points, then Boston with 38. And then in the wild card, uh, Detroit's the closest. They have 36 points to Boston's 38. CBJ and us have 33, and so does MJ. And then it falls all the way back to 20s. And then the West, um, Nashville, St. Louis, Colorado would be the teams in in the Central right now. Vegas, Anaheim, Calgary would be the Pacific with Minnesota heavily ahead of it. Not heavily ahead, but 44 to 39. Still, though, yeah. Do you know what's really amazing? The is second that, one, of course, tied with San Jose and the Kings right now, and then Edmonton is 38 points. The East, you know, the Eastern League has far and away more points than the, the Western. Western. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Nashville, though, is one of my teams, though, that I think is scary this year, even though they might not have the point share, like we just said, with the West. But if they maybe they shouldn't push the offensive pace as much like Lance was saying when we were done with the show. But at this point, you kind of want to get the most out of Deshane and Johansson because you're, I think that was more, we yeah. need to get these dudes going. But this year they're a team that they're 10 and five on home place, which is good, but they're 13, six and two. They're one of the better teams on the road, which yeah. is going to play well towards when you have to play tough opponents late. If they can keep getting good key wins on the road, that's going to really help them to be able to stay not just with the St. Louis's and Colorado's throughout the season, but there is a team that people start going, oh, well, this is kind of going from a surprise team to now we kind of have to talk about this team. Exactly. That's kind of how I feel about Anaheim. Exactly. Yeah. Ana well, Anaheim, I feel like because of the way they bursted onto the scene, they kind of have been in already the talked about team is oh, maybe this team is not what we thought they were. And because they have such a great young talent plus a great goaltender. We should have expected a little bit more out of them. Uh, uh, well, they didn't really, they didn't really show much of it uh, late, At you know. Years, but you also didn't have Troy Terry performing like his breakout season this year. Uh, you True. got uh, Isaac Luderstrom keeps getting better as a 200 foot guy. On Gibson's their been. Gibson's uh, been standing Gibson, on his bloody Gibson, head. So large has actually has been a good backup. As well. I know that's been and really their good too. With uh, Stauthers, I believe. Yeah, Mike Stauthers leaves their defense. Uh, is playing one of the most efficient they have in years. So exactly. So and also too, I think Calgary also would count. You'd have to put Calgary in that list as well too of surprise teams. I think coming out of the West because. Yeah. They've been very good on the road, too, 13-7-2. They barely played at home yet. They only played eight, 11 home games, and they're 4-3-4. Four, four. Right. So, so they would like to be better there, but they haven't had the sample size of other teams either. The, we've seen how good they are on the road, Calgary. We've oh. seen them come down come down the west, come down the east coast and just house everybody. So, you know, yeah, Calgary, that, but and that's kind of why I'm thinking about Calgary, well, too, hard. you know. When you have it's the same thing. We talked about it. The Ducks are a surprise team looking like they're a little bit ahead or better than they were supposed to do because everybody was talking about it's a different perspective. The Ducks were kind of heading towards this trajectory, but people thought it was another year out maybe or another like before they – Maybe. Really yeah, maybe, where, yeah. Where with the, where with the um, flame, just like rumors 
like Lynn Holmes, the Goudreau's rumors of people being moved because they people thought yeah. they were not going to be as impressive and kind of be a team that under performs again. And then they're doing this and they exactly. have one of the best goaltenders in the league this season. Goaltending and defense goes a huge way. Their defense is really performing. Uh, I, I think that uh, is really going to help them going forward where the flames, um, the one thing that they are, they're not the best at developing everything, but the one thing that I guess you could say they have done okay is turned offensive defensemen into somewhat decent, better defensive defensemen. Because if you look at Shillington this year, he's playing his very good offensively, but his best overall defensive season. And then Noah Hannafin has kind of become their lesser version of uh, – Pesce, where like he used to be more what you thought would be the offense, push 13 points to 32 games isn't bad. But now in over 20 minutes a night, he's able to be reliable on both ends rather than be suspect on the other end of the ice, uh, which was which was an issue earlier in his career with Carolina. So I think I think the coaching change in Calgary was a huge. Daryl Sutton. Has, yeah, that has a huge because like he they brought him in halfway through the year last year. And then he got to basically evaluate what he had on the team and then have a full training camp and then was able to come out with guns blazing with his system, his philosophy, his the guys that he wants for the most part. You know what I mean? And no, bang, I, here you go. I think Calgary's a dangerous team. The problem with the West is that they have to look out for who is a riser as Edmonton's falling as uh, Winnipeg's kind of bottoming out, yeah, not doing the best, and Dallas again needs to get going on the road, then they'd be good. A yeah. riser is the, uh, as everybody in uh, Vancouver likes to say, Bruce, there it is, uh, the Vancouver yeah. Canucks, yeah. who are eight one and one. Um, they're still only at thirty five points. Uh, they're not there yet, but if they keep, it's like Boudreaux said when he got hired. All we have to do is win the rest of the season. And then we're good. Well, well, an eight one and one start uh, doing well in in your first ten. Uh, that's going to get you going in the right directions. Then if you can even win seven or sit, keep winning six, seven, eight in the next tens each time, you're going to keep building, moving up the standings. That you're going to have to have the teams like Edmonton that are sinking, and Winnipeg that's kind of just played flat, kind of like average. You're going to have to really pick that up. Otherwise, all of a sudden you're going to see Vancouver go from seventh to sixth to fifth to fourth, and then you're going to be going, the Sharks and Kings are going to be going, oh, where the heck did the Canucks come from? And then, Yeah, so, right. They're, they're so. a team that had the talent. It's just uh, with Bruce Boudreaux, you know you're going to be able to push uh, the offense, and now, now they've been able to do um, a lot more efficient on, the, on offense since he's come in, and that's obviously got them a lot of wins. But at the same time, they've still been good defensively. That's why Boudreaux even said himself, like my, my system, like he when he got higher, basically that his system's not necessarily not defensive. It's just he wants to be aggressive to then push the offense. So he wants to kind of make his defensemen be more in their face and use the talents, like the the, the skills they have, rather than kind of play back like some teams do too much nowadays. See, that's why I was I I I really thought he might have been a good pick to come to Philadelphia to take over after AV got fired. Um, I thought he might have been a good coach for Philadelphia at the time. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, Vancouver was able to snatch him up. And he's 8-1-1 one one since he's gotten the job, which means that when uh, he was brought in, the team was 8-14-2. and two. Yeah, they were not. Yeah, they were. They <laughs> really are picking it up. They're one of the hottest teams in the league since he's come in. That's why. They have a chance to kind of recover here and uh, potentially get themselves back into the race. And then you're going to start having Vancouver fans, of course, think that they're the next St. Louis. And then we'll have to see what happens. Here, so. <laughs> well, you know, look, hey, as long as you can get yourself to the dance, you know, it doesn't really matter. Right. I mean, as long as you can win enough to get to the point where you can qualify for the extra season. Who cares how you get there? 
you know, it's it's probably going to be ugly for some teams. It always is. There's always teams out there that struggle, and it, it's hard, and they, they make it at the very last second, and they make it into the playoffs. And those are the teams you don't want to play because those are the teams that are hungry. You know what I mean? Usually. I mean, usually. You know, most of the time you, you, you get to – you, you end up playing a team that comes in hot, winning all their games before they come into the playoffs, and then that's not the team you want to play neither. You know, you want to play a team that's, oh, hey, you rested your starters and you lost the last couple of games of the season. Yeah, that's the team I want to play the first round in the playoffs. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. well, I think, um, I think now, though, the other um, issue uh, – like you said, obviously some teams have less gains, but there's other teams that I think they're going to be able to recover on too. Like I said, well, you can take advantage of teams like, well, first of all, San Jose was playing ahead of where people thought they would be in the season. So if they fall back, yeah. they're a team. Edmonton started to fall back already. And then Winnipeg's bottom and then Dallas has to get going on the road. So if they can do that, then that'll really help them. And then Vancouver might be screwed. But if they don't do that, and Vancouver keeps picking it up, they're the team that might be able to get yeah. to third or fourth and then be right exactly. back behind these wild card teams exactly. um, competing uh, right there uh, to potentially uh, get into the postseason. So that, that that's what's going to be interesting uh, to see going forward where for the Ducks, um, they, I want to see them and, and Calgary do better in their next 10 because Calgary did bad in their list and they were three, six or one. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, them continue to kind of be that team that can yeah. pushing and uh, do something because this might be one of their last hurrahs since Goudreau's going to move on and they have other guys they have to worry about signing and whatnot. So Probably. you want to kind of push it this year with especially the great goaltending you're getting. So uh, th- that's why I want to see them do better and I want to see the Ducks uh, four four and two with a young team. I would love to be like have your worst ten game stretch obviously be around five hundred. So that's fine. But let's get it pushing a little bit back to what you were doing to start the season. Yeah. In the next 10 games, because I think the Ducks, with the, all the offensive talent they have and the way that Stothers has that defense playing, is a mighty dangerous team because you have John Gibson also uh, this yeah. season. Now, now you just got to keep picking it up again. Where if you're Colorado, St. Louis, and Nashville, you guys have been cruising the last 10 and have been good all for one, well, for the most part all season with those teams. You just got to keep doing uh, what, you're, what, what you're doing. And then Boston has impressed me in their last 10 because they're not the same Boston Bruins as we talked about a bit on the podcast. Uh, but they still, and it's kind of a little bit by default of CBJ falling back, the Flyers sucking, and New Jersey being New Jersey. Um, where if Yeah, Jordan that's a good way to look at it. Pick up on the away um, realm. It's the same thing for the Bruins. They might be screwed, uh, similarly to how I said Vancouver might be screwed if Dallas can pick up on the away realm. But um, it's going to be interesting to see because Boston has been playing better to kind of stay in that wild card pace themselves. And they have been a team that's been 9-6-1, and one, so two above at home. But the 9-5-1, and one, three above away, they've been at least consistently just solid. They haven't been great at all, but consistently just okay, where these other teams have been really bad on the road. In Columbus, in Detroit, the Flyers have been bad at each. And then New Jersey's been uh, bad on the road, and then it's two games above at home in hockey 500 turned to 9-7-3. and three. So um, that, that's been helping them out, just being solid in both ends. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, look, there's still a boatload of hockey left to play. There's still a lot of stuff that's, that's well, going to happen. Let's jump on from hockey, though, to go to the NFL, because that's what I wanted to do next. There's one team I wanted to ask you about, because the Rangers, I think we called it a year in advance, me, you, and Pirlo, where this is the year they really started hitting it. I think we all kind of projected them last year when we had that video we were doing. But the team I want to ask you Someone, about. Someone, I think, yeah. Isn't really them, because we just projected that a year in advance. We were actually right about them being an impressive team is a team that John, check out off the wall hockey's video if you want to check it out on the Washington Capitals, but the Capitals staying at this clip. Like, I, I thought they would descend a little bit where they're right there, one point behind the Rangers and Carolina for the Metropolitan. As they're getting older, a big part is because Ovechkin seems like age is just a number. Backstrom seems like other. He gets banged up a bit, but when healthy, age is just a number. He's still a great playmaker. 
you have Kuznetsov, you have Carlson. I mean, maybe we just underestimated this team since they were able to get Vanacek back and keep their goalie tandem, too. And they didn't even lose that after they thought they were going to lose and they got him right back. Yeah. Um, they finished really strong at the end of last year. The Rangers did. They pushed uh, to and they were they were not that far from making the playoffs. Um, that's true. Quite, so we were kind of right last year. But what about the Capitals? Though? OK, so that's kind of where I'm going to go with here. So the Islanders have significantly dropped off. So that has opened the gates for a team to step in. And that team that decides to step in is the Rangers. Okay. And, man, I'll tell you what. That team has just been playing very well. They are playing good, responsible hockey. They play good on the defense. They they forecheck really well. Their their guys pinch at the right time. They're making the right decisions at the right times. They're just playing really good hockey. You you, you can't argue how good uh, the goaltending tandem has been there. Shesterkin has been playing. Okay, okay, I wouldn't mind having him as a goalie. What? You, you, I mean, you know what and I'm saying. Gorgiev, after a slow start, actually has bottomed become what you expect of him is just a good 905 to 910 save percentage yeah. save percentage back still in the nines though right still in the nines okay and then really thought that pittsburgh was going to drop away and thought that washington was going to drop away because let's face it Washington's not getting any younger. TJ Oshie is another year older. Baxham is another year older. And and Ovechkin's another year older. And you said it. It doesn't seem to matter. Age is just a number for them guys. They're just still cranking it off. And it doesn't matter how many games Oshie misses. It doesn't matter how many games Baxham misses or whoever else wants to miss games down there. It doesn't matter. Laviolette, I, I, I got to be honest with you. You might even have to put him as a Jack Adams for this year, the way he's got these Capitals playing, uh, I would have to say you might have to consider him for Jack Adams. And I'll tell you somebody else who you'd have to consider as well, too. And that would be uh, uh, Sullivan from uh, uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, because they fit into the same category of age <clears throat> doesn't seem to matter if you're Chris Letang or obviously, well, Crosby also had COVID with symptoms comes back, it only takes him about five games to become Sidney Crosby again. I mean, he's, he's got, got what, another, six game what, point streak now yeah, he's on he's and you know yeah. Other leagues taking like six weeks just to get back to their normal self. Yeah. Crosby's just like, I oh, don't mind me. I'm still the second coming of Wayne Gretzky. I uh, don't worry about me here. Yeah, <laughs> right. And and oh. Malkin <laughs> they've missed Malkin this entire time. No, okay. yeah. They've missed Malkin and the other thing is though the big thing I think that fits in with the Capitals is you hit it when you said it doesn't matter with the guys that have gone out because other guys, have, they have a young, talented guy that they picked 25th in 2019 and Connor McMichael, who's showing his talent already this year. He stepped Ding. up. Moments. Wilson Ding. has stepped up. Alexi Protus is a great net from Oh, yeah. Ding, Five ding. Um, and then you have Daniel Sprong has slid from the fourth line to the first line times and and has fit in 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 a bunch of different spots. He's like Lappy, how he always likes having those Swiss Army. He's that Swiss Army player that they have there where um, that's why the Capitals on top of the goaltending, the defense playing well, which with Lappy, you let you know your defense is at least going to be smash mouth in your face with the current stop. At least. Yeah, that's going to help. That's why they're still successful even with older guys because he's putting them in great positions where with the um, Rangers, um, they're just getting the most success. Um, Dan Quinn's t- or not Dan Quinn's team, uh, Gerard Gallant's team, um, is getting the most success because, uh, similar to what he did with Vegas, he's trying to just kind of, I think, tell guys be your offensive self, don't over like think things. Like, yeah, think these players have done, and Kako's starting to really kind of emerge this year with Kreider and Zabenajad at times. Uh, Strom is a uh, UFA, but he's playing a really good season. Goudreau's fitting in well. He didn't end up being that Nick Ritchie, like, which didn't end up working out with Toronto. Goudreau's worked out really well with the Rangers. And then you have Lafreniere, who's starting to develop, but you don't give him the pressure because you have these other guys performing above, so it's letting him 
develop yeah. that is a great height. He's on the third line. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Aaron's a good player. Lindgren and Fox is one of the best defense oh, yeah. in hockey. So you have the defense. You got the goaltending. Um, Sesterkin's one of the best young goaltenders. Gorgiev's a very good backup. Both of these teams, I think, are going to stay dangerous because of what you said and uh, what what I completely agree, agree with. That they're just getting good coaching and getting great play throughout their team. Yeah. And one is just defying father time, and the other is just doing great because they drafted well and brought in very good veterans um, it's to their team as well um, in, in the New York Rangers, like Barkley Goodrow's exactly. of the world the Jacob Trubas of the world, even Tenorti, who's a great locker room guy because he's been great. Uh, with exactly. Um, but had to work his tail off to get back up because he never cut it. And then he started doing good with Nashville a couple of years ago and now has made his career as a six, seven defenseman and a, still a good NHL or when he's down there. So exactly. Very much impressed with what the Rangers have done this year as well as what Washington and Pittsburgh have done. Was not expecting them to 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 be there. I thought they would be more of the aging teams that would be falling away. Uh, was expecting a little bit more from New Jersey this year. Not seeing that. Was expecting a lot more from Philadelphia this year. Not seeing that. Right. Um. And the Islanders, like what? What the frick happened to the Islanders? Well, with Pittsburgh, I think it also fits into they did great on the signings for guys on the cheap. Like Evan Rodriguez is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. He's and he's been lighting Dayton, it up. Yeah, Dayton Heinen's uh, 0.47 points per game, which is really good for a guy at 1.1 1. 1, uh, million bucks. And then Jeff Carter's at 0. 0.64 points per game for a guy at 2.63. <laughs> Uh, and so like you're getting bang for your buck left and right, uh, through the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, lineup. We're about to go into football <laughs> through the Pittsburgh Penguins, um, lineup. And also since going there, Pirlo and I were going, oh, Matheson, interesting. Mike Matheson wasn't doing that great in Florida. Right? Goes to Pittsburgh, has been playing like Mike Matheson did at the beginning of his career again. Hey, uh, you know. so. Now he's got the skating speed back. Looks like he's flying on the ice again. Like so, like they're, they're pushing all the right buttons there. So yeah, they're they're, they're defying Father Time, just like the Capitals. The Rangers are doing great because they brought in the right veterans mixed with their plethora of young talent. That's not even all there yet. Uh, there's still a bunch of them with the Hartford Wolf Pack that have a chance to be Rangers. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. And in college, and or yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they have a good prospect pool if you're the New York Rangers. Pittsburgh doesn't, so they still want to win now. And Washington is kind of in the middle. But they're getting draft picks. Pittsburgh is anyway. So they're they're starting to put together draft picks. They got hexed all there. So, you know, you mentioned it, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, and uh, we got to say it. Playoffs? Playoffs? How about that? The NFL is in I'm, I mean, playoffs. The NFL, it was, yeah, I mean, this year, uh, I didn't expect, I mean, we were <laughs> talking on the show, it didn't this year seem flew like by. you expected uh, your Steelers to get in, but this is what, I, I brought it to you before the show, but I have to bring it to you now on the show, because the Chiefs, well, one, their defense is not that great to begin with, uh, but two, when you you can, like I said, at times with running, you can fit a hockey Zamboni or a Mack truck through the rushing defense. So if, if you that's can true. commit to the run, now that's an if, but but answer it in that world. Imagine they do commit to the run. What do you give your chances at that point compared to if you keep playing by the same play style you've been playing all season? Against the Chiefs, for people that don't know they're playing the Chiefs. Okay, so... It's not that Pittsburgh isn't committed to the run. And it's not that Pittsburgh doesn't have one of the best rookie running backs in the league. Because they do. Okay. Najee Harris. The first rookie to go his entire first season without a credited fumble. He's had over 300 touches and not a single fumble. So... Give it up to the big Naj. The problem is not that Pittsburgh is not committed to the run. The problem is not that Kansas City has a pretty weak 
run defense. The problem is, is that Pittsburgh doesn't have a good enough offensive line to get a hat on a hat to get guys cleared out so that there can be a, an a, – a, Although a, at the same time, though, if you look at it, like you can open up your – for example, for a guy like Big Ben, if you have a shoddy offensive line but a great running back, Sometimes that's able to, like Saquon in his first couple of years, I wouldn't accuse the Giants of having a great offensive line by any stretch of the imagination. Right. They, they opened up their passing game because he was just able to ex- like spread out, like just showcase yes. his talents and get yardage that was then able to open yeah. up the passing game more at either what? the end of Eli's career or the start of Daniel, Daniel Jones. That um, I feel like it could fit into that perspective more of, well, you yeah. have a great back, even though your line might not be the squeakiest. You can still, if you can just, especially against bad rush defenses, like just have a couple plays to get it going, and they just show that you're actually running it. Even if, say, you have 13 rushes for 50 yards, it's still showing that you're going to do it, that it puts it in the defensive mind. If you only do it six times, and then, guy, that didn't work. Then the defense is just going to go, well, the, the yeah. Big Ben, pressure Big Ben, he can't move at this point of his career. They, they're they passing it the rest of the game. And at that point, you're shot. That's why I feel like you have to stay committed to it for that perspective. I'm because with you. The only thing the Chiefs are going to be able to do is really pressure you because they have a couple cats that can do that, but they don't have the best overall defense. I'm with you, but they don't need to have the best overall defense because the Pittsburgh offensive line is – shoddy to say the least the fact that a 39 year old was sacked what fifth or sixth most in the league this year that's not good for a 39 year old quarterback who's going to be retiring okay the the last time the Steelers played the Chiefs they tried I believe it was 12 rushes and Ben threw the ball 46 times or something crazy like that right that's never a success to win in Pittsburgh. Okay. Exactly. You- that's what I mean. That's why, like, I would, I feel like even if, like, your offensive line is not going to get better in a week, obviously, unless if these guys somehow turn into Popeye and, uh, get mu- and eat beans. It and- don't matter if they <laughs> eat their beans or spinach or whatever. It ain't going to matter. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, like, <clears throat> I think if you just commit to it more than just 12 times and then kind of go be it from that game, because I remember I wasn't watching that game, but it was hopping up on red zone a lot that week. You, you, if you just stayed to show more runs, because it just goes to the motto of sometimes being deceptive is the best way, because if you just showcase, oh, on second down, like we had a great first down play, it's second and three. Let's just run, even if we only pick up a yard. We're showing them we're still running the football because then it stays. If you keep that in the frame of mind of a defense, they're not nice. going to be able to sack Big Ben as much because they're not going to be able to pressure him as Agreed. much as you're still in the frame of mind that you're going to run. That's okay. more the only thing I I, I, I was um, saying. Well, I agree with uh, you where um, you've obviously watched the team all, all year. They don't have – you would never accuse them. Just like I said, you would never accuse the Giants of having a good offensive line, you would never accuse the Steelers this year of having a good offensive line. Honestly, I think Pittsburgh is the Why do you think Big ben worst team. <laughs> I think they're the worst team in the playoffs right now. As far as the, I can't believe they're in. I mean, the fact that they had a five-game stretch during this season, and it wasn't that long ago. In fact, it was in the month of December. Part of it, part of this last, part of their last five games, or these five games that I'm going to talk about here. The Pittsburgh Steelers in those last five games gave up a thousand yard rusher and two thousand yard receivers in five games. Now, I don't know about you. But that is not good numbers, okay? So it doesn't matter the fact that it's Kansas City. Dude, it it, it could be the Jaguars who absolutely thumped the Colts, right? But it could be the Jaguars. It doesn't matter because Pittsburgh doesn't have a good enough offensive line 
to get their running back to the second level. And then there's not enough, there's not enough razzle dazzle. There's not enough, whatever you want to call it in Canada's offense to even draw the guys when guys go in motion, when, when you don't see a defensive back going with the guy in motion, that means the defense is not fooled. And you are exactly right. If you take away the run game from Pittsburgh, which you very well easily can, and then all, the only thing you have is, is wide receiver screens and little slants over the middle with Ben because he can't run, he can't scramble, he can't do anything. You, you know what I mean? So your team is like ultra one-dimensional. So that's why I, I, I don't get it. I just, I'm just. I'm no, yeah, I definitely would pick the Chiefs in that game. I was just asking you from the perspective. Because if they could get the run going, they have a much better chance if they can just showcase it a little bit. Look, any given Sunday, right? Any given Sunday, you flip the coin and the game's played and and bang, any any given Sunday. But the odds are stacked pretty much against Pittsburgh in this one. Um, It's going to be in Kansas City. Uh, You're playing against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Good luck with that. Another interesting matchup is going to be the uh, Buffalo Bills um, because they're playing their division opponent coming on a three game or a four game, excuse me, a win streak to round out the season where the Patriots were two and three in their last five. Um, Because of the way Allen at the end and the Bills in in totality uh, started playing better. Um, I'm still not ready to say I'm picking this team to win the AFC by any stretch, but to win this particular game in the AFC against the Patriots, uh, I would say they're in a pretty good spot to do that because they got a good running game. Singletary's been playing fine. Uh, You got a good receiving game. Obviously, having Diggs there significantly helped. Dawson Knox is a killer tight end, and Allen's starting to play more like Josh Allen. Where Early in the season, this team was too suspect for me to pick them for anything. And then they really started doing better. I would go with the bills against the Patriots because the Patriots has been less than impressive of late where the bills have been a, one of the best ending teams to the season. So, Like I said before, you want to go into now, you want to go into the playoffs winning, especially in the NFL. You want to go into the playoffs winning. You want to go in on a hot streak and you, I am not a fan of resting players, okay? I Because depending on when you start resting players and then when your game is, you potentially could go three weeks without seeing any game action if you rest your starters. If you understand you're, if what I'm you're saying? a top team, yeah, it, it fits into a different perspective because you're absolute. But if you're like the Eagles or something or teams that you know you're going to play the next week and you don't have the – "Quote unquote biggest depth, you probably don't want your top guys to go out a week that you're just playing for. Okay, do we want to be seventh or sixth? Like you don't want them to get. Yeah, injured. I'm with you on that. And you have guys that haven't proven anything playing your receiver position. Right, I'm with you on that. Okay, those were extenuating circumstances for the Eagles because it didn't really matter. They had already clinched a playoff berth, so it didn't really matter. That final game didn't matter, but. I am of the ilk that all games matter, and I am trying to win each game, okay? And that's how I look at things. So, but I really think this is, I don't, uh, if Buffalo beats the Patriots, then they have a chance, okay? But... And the fact that it's going to be in Buffalo, right? Um, ah, Do you know what's really amazing about this matchup, right? There's one name that's missing from this matchup that would would make the turn easy to – that would make this call easy. And that guy is playing for the Buccaneers now. So I'm here to tell you, I'm going with Buffalo on this one all day long. 
Yeah, like I don't think Mac Jones had a bad rookie season by any. Nope, stretch. not by but, any stretch of the word. But it's just you have a team that's been there a little bit more. Allen's been there already; has had winning seasons. Max in his rookie season. Exactly. Um, so I think that's going to put them over the hump. They were hot. The the, the Patriots were cold in the season, like you mm-hmm. said. That's never mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, we both have picked the Chiefs uh, for the one game and the Bills for the other game. Uh, for Titans fans, we'll be talking about your team next week. Since you guys, mm-hmm. congratulations, got the bye. So you're not important right now. You're being important. Next week. Yeah, you're not important right now. But I'll tell you what, yeah. who is important, and that is the 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 pro Joe's Eagles made it into the postseason. Yeah, and... skipped over one AFC team though. We should probably talk about uh, your bow. You like Joe Burrow, so we're skip. We'll, we'll go. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I I think I think the Bengals. This Bengals. might be a chance for them. The, the Raiders, the, uh, yeah, that wasn't the best showing for them on Sunday night. The Raiders are a me- they are another mediocre one of the teams in the playoffs. That, Even though they're ten I, and I, seven, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think they um, were bad by any stretch. They were ten and seven, and they were four, right. one of the last five. So if Derek Carr can uh, really do well in this game and, and match Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow is like my friend and I were talking. He he said it when we were on PlayStation. He's just a dog. Like he's a dude that has that different gear. Uh, when it when it happens, that's why. Despite their offensive line would never be accused of being good last season. He had True. a really but now, injury, and they're still not good this year. And right they're where they're at now. So uh, I I would go with the Bengals because Joe Burrow, at least for this first round, I think he's going to figure out any way, shape, and form possible to win that game. I think they have a better running game, and and I think their offensive line is slightly better. And I also agree to this. And now you understand now why I like Joe Burrow. Because he is a dog. He's got that. I think the Bengals have a better running game. In terms of the offensive lines, I would say they're <laughs> even to – it might actually – because the Raiders have a couple. Yeah. Lines. Like but, I said, though, I, I but like – but I think with the Bengals having Jacobs a better running help. game. Yeah. With Josh Jacobs, though, like that's the thing. If he can be on the field for the entire game. He's yeah. one of the more talented running backs. I agree. The issue is he just gets injured. Every time. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. like, th- that would match. They can match better there. But just because of the way um, the Bengals, I think, with Joe Burrow, they're just going to be able to find. And I think they, Bengals defense, too. They do have the – yeah, I would definitely give them the defense. Uh, I think they have yeah, a better be- defense than the Raiders do as well, I think, um, yeah. uh, for sure. Yeah, so I would definitely go with the Bengals on that one. Uh, in that matchup too, so and then for the so we NFL, both picked the B teams. We picked the Bengals and the Bills. <laughs> Bengals, Bills, and then it was the Chiefs. If only Chiefs. So we're we're following the the we're yeah, following the alphabet. Like Kansas City Bison or something, and then we could have picked all. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. Well, no, that's not how that's going to work. But <laughs> but, but well, how about if we go with a B team anyway, and go with the Buccaneers over the Eagles? Yeah, yeah, that game. The Bucks' run defense is good, so it's going to be interesting to see. Granted, the Patriots' run defense wasn't there when we actually did very well against them in the Super Bowl when, when Tom Brady was once upon a time on that team. Uh, but uh, the, it's going to be interesting because the Eagles are obviously the be- they were the best rushing team in the league once Nick Sirianni committed to it this year. If you're able to still, because of the way our line has played and since Johnson's come back, other guys have stepped up. Um, even when guys have gone down, if you can commit to the run and be able to mix the plays like that, and the second biggest key is not drop the football because that um, hurts, hurt, hurt, hurts. Um, hit that. Try to say that three times. Hurt hurts. Hurt hurts. Passing percentage and, <laughs> percentage and QBR because yeah. of the drops and everything yeah. that he would be better and have more touchdowns. So like uh, th- that makes a huge factor to have a chance against. Tampa Bay, because the one thing I will say in my lifetime, most of the times I've watched an Eagles game against Tom Brady, whether it's they've been close, even with A.J. Feely, of all people, in the game. The game was yeah. close in that season against the Patriots at that time. So true. like, it seems like they always find a way to be a team that plays it close to um, one of the best of all time in, in Tom Brady. And even in games he plays great like he did in the Super Bowl, they beat him in the Super Bowl. Uh, so yeah. like yeah yeah so, they just play. I, I'm not predicting the Eagles to win this game, but I think because 
of the way they've been playing and the way the run's been going. And even the, even if you go three deep, because you have Scott Sanders and Howard, if you go to the fourth guy, I really like that game wall guy we picked up on what he was able to do. And then they even added Huntley to the active roster, I think, for return purposes. The other running back they picked up, they've been picking backs fine off the scrap heap or in the draft. Now they just have to match picking receivers like they picked Devontae Smith and not get the Reggers and J. Joles of the J.J. or Sega White side who just does nothing. So, exactly. like, you got to you gotta match that, and that would help you going forward. But for this year, if they can keep the run going and they can keep kind of doing these either RPOs or play actions, I think this game will be close. But obviously, who am I favoring in a close game as much as I hate to say it? That would be Tom Brady. Look, I have every confidence in the, the game, world. Like the Super Bowl somehow and just don't give it to – other than with a, like the seconds on the clock that even Brady has to chuck a ball and then you end up winning it because it's a chuck a ball, basically. Yeah, right. So that here's the situation I would feel really good about. I don't want to give Brady the ball up by three, up by two, up by whatever. You have to be up by eight or whatever, up by seven, so he can only tie it if he has a minute or more on the clock. So, so here's how you beat Brady, okay? There's only one way to do it. And if you do it and you're successful, you will win every single time. And that is exactly what you said. If the Eagles can commit to the run and stay and be successful at it, that keeps Tom Brady on the sideline. The best way to beat Tom Brady is to have Tom Brady standing on the sideline. True, because that's kind of even though he went off in the Super Bowl, if you go back and look at the key, the biggest moments of the yeah. Super Bowl, that's yeah. when they kept him. They would extend the drive. Exactly. That's when they would keep him off the field when it was the second half. And it would what were they on third down? For Mr. Clutch to be on the field, literally. Right. Not what were they on clutch. third down? Like they were 60% or almost yeah, 70%. Yeah, it was like 60, 65%. Like the Eagles' third down percentage was ridiculous in the Super Bowl. Were full. That's what so I mean. If you can have, and, and Hurts has been pretty efficient on third down. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Had come to. You have to have a catch if you're – even Dallas at times, Goddard, who's a great tight end, and I think he's going to be one of the better ones oh, yeah. for plays, he's had a couple of drops. So you just have to secure the ball. Devontae Smith, the rookie, that's been fantastic. He's been our best overall secure of the ball. Um, you have to be able to do that better going forward. But the reason I think the Eagles also might have a decent chance at running a little bit against Tampa and actually mixing it in better than most teams is – Nick Sirianni's done a good job since committing to the run of mixing our backs. It's not like he just – now, when a guy gets hot, he'll go to him for a couple straight drives, whether it's Howard or whether it's yeah. Scott. Uh, yeah. Hasn't been in as much, but uh, you could throw him in that category as well. But he'll, make, he'll have Sanders and then he'll put Howard in. He's more of just the – like, I'm just going to go through you and also can kind of finesse you a bit, but more through you back. And then Scott, who kind of reminds you of a mini Sproles where he's small as heck, but then he somehow – hits a D-back off of himself, and you're like, well, how the heck did he do that? He's like 5'5". Five, five. Right. So, like, he, they kind of found their that, – that's why I like how they're able to pick up those guys. Going forward for my Eagles, it's about picking up the rest of the receiver guys because you're good at picking up certain other guys, select guys like Sproles, Mentor, like Boston Scott. And then you have Gamewell, who's another good playmaker. If you mix it up with the running backs, too, you're going to keep throwing them off because you can use the game walls and Scott when you have two backs on the field like we have at times. Right. One into a passing route, then you choose to pass it instead of hand it off, and he's open and he's taken off down the field for 10 to 15 yards because those guys fly once you put the ball in either of their hands. So I'm with you. I'm with you. But I would say if it comes close, it's going to, like I said, it's a close game. I would have to favor Brady, but I don't think – the Eagles are going to get smoked by Tampa Bay if they're able to actually mix in these backs like they have all season um, and actually run the football well. Because even against some of the bad teams they beat, it's not like all the bad teams have had bad run defenses. True. Like some of their strengths have been that, and they still went, well, forget you. I'm still running the football at you. Exactly. So, exactly. Like That's why I like if Nick Sirianni can stick to his guns, I'm really going to love him in this first playoff game, even if we lose. Because it shows me that he's a coach that goes, I don't care what the stats say. This is what I, this is how I built this team. And we're going to keep it close, just going at you and kind of playing the old school smash mouth football. Like we're just coming right for you, basically. Exactly. And, you know, I, I'm all for that. I, I wish you all lots of luck. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, uh, I do, but uh, anyway, so we got. I would rather play Dallas. If we played Dallas, I would have. Yeah, that, that would have been. I think that would have been a much better draw if, for you guys. Honestly, if Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't suck in his playoff game, and I say that with the nicest way possible I could possibly say, it's just Jimmy Garoppolo has at times not been impressive when he should be. I think they should honestly put in Trey Lance if he starts struggling in the playoff game. But I'm with you, but that's yeah. beside the point. Uh, if they Garoppolo's do, been hurt though this year, huh? Garoppolo's been hurt this yeah, year. He's he missing time. Up, but like, even I'm just talking about throughout his career, he fits in that Kirk Cousins, like even below Kirk, where Kirk's even stepped up more than him. Where Jimmy G's always been good, but never been able to step up in key moments. Honest, honestly, man, I think this is Cowboys all day. On this. Do you think it will? Because I think the, I think it depends how their defense plays. Because I don't mind the 49ers defense. I just very much mind their offense that push their defense on the field. That's what I. Yeah, their offense is able to do better against the Cowboys defense, which can also, at yeah. times, if they can't get the pressure, if you can block and not allow them to be the potent blitz, then they can actually kind of. Exactly. Have these possession numbers a bit by running the football with that yeah. middle kid or other people, then that can help them be close because I think they might have the better defense overall. It's mm-hmm. just the, the Cowboys have the better blitzing, probably. I agree with that 100%. Um, so that's why I don't know if they'll get smoked. That's why I feel like. No, I don't, no, I don't think any of these games are going to be completely and utterly lopsided. I think the one game that might be potentially lopsided is the Chiefs Steelers game. Maybe if 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 God forbid anything were to happen in any one of these games where the turnover ratios go way askew, you know what I mean? That's really the only game I see being completely a blowout would be the Chiefs over the Steelers. I think the Cowboys are going to play. The 49ers are going to play well. Both of those teams are going to play well. It's going to be a competitive game. I think the same thing with the the Patriots and the Bills and the Raiders and the and the Bengals and and the the Eagles and Tampa Bay as well too, I, I, and and even Cardinals and and the Rams. I I don't think there's going to be any real blowouts in any of these games. Okay, these are all even though yeah, they're that Cardinals Rams one will be interesting because the Cardinals are one of the coldest teams. They're colder than the Patriots. Uh, coming into the playoffs. So yeah, exactly. Where, where the Rams have really had Odell Beckham now with Stafford start to find that click and just kind of come connected with each other, that if they keep playing to that level, you have a receiver of his help be able to go up and uh, get the football and everything. Exactly. Um, and if you have and if you have Murray on the field and if you can get James Conner back on the field and you can get the Cardinals back up and healthy and running again. And from what I understand, um, J.J. Watt might be available for this game yeah, as well, yeah. too. Okay. So, so I mean, yeah, I think I don't think it'll be a blowout, but just with the way the rate or not the Ravens, the Rams have been playing the other R team. Yeah, um, right. I, I would say I'm going to have to go towards them because Stafford's been impressing me. He does what Goff can't. He can spread the ball. Like what Jared Goff could do in past years is what Matthew Stafford can do. He's a gunslinger. Jared Goff is a game manager. He's, Matthew Stafford can throw it over the top of cornerbacks. Yeah, Goff. yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think he really helps that offense be the offense they want to be and be the He's sometimes quick striking and then at other times using acres and other guys to be a little bit slow, but still be a good foot and offense. I feel like the way that team's trending has been up at the right time. Like you were saying earlier in the podcast, that's why I have to go with the um, Rams because they've been ticking up right at the right time. Odell's been fitting in like a glove. And then you have um, the Cardinals have to go in the opposite direction. So when I, I believe that the, um, the Cardinals played the Rams earlier in the year, yeah. And and I'm trying to um, I'm trying to go back here and see because it I'm was a pre- win for the Rams. It was the it was Monday the third. Yeah, December, yeah. Thirty to twenty three win for the Rams. Okay, that's okay. So honestly, that like concert I, is bad in two. Uh, he had two. He had yardage, but two interceptions. Where right. Stafford had three touchdowns. Exactly. Um, so and Sonny Michelle even ran uh, really well for them in that game. Exactly. So 
unless Arizona can somehow find a way to put it together and get Murray on track and get everything rolling again, I think it's going to be a repeat uh, of that game. And I think it's going to be a Rams win on that one as well, too. I'm, I, I'm definitely leaning Rams. I would listen. I would love to see the Cardinals. Would love to see. That would be a great story for them. And I would love to see the Cardinals do that. You know what I mean? But I just eh, – I, I think the Rams just have their number. This is the Cardinals' year to get the experience where the Rams have people – now Stafford really has, and so it'll be interesting to yeah. see how Stafford does in his play. But, but, but have people that have been there, done that. The Cardinals have a, a younger team that is getting the Kirks of the world, the Murrays of the world, getting the feel of the NFL playoffs. Exactly. And that's just going to help them in the future, but I don't think they're necessarily going to win um, this year. Now, something that I think would be cool to end uh, the show off as we uh, wrap up our NFL talk would be – Tennessee and Green Bay are both the first round buys in the AFC and the NFC. Uh, I'll say my answer on the NFC after or AFC, excuse me, after I let you go. But would you say the team that are in the first round buy in the Tennessee Titans is actually the favorite to win the entire AFC and go to the Super Bowl? No, I think Kansas City is. Kansas City? Yeah, I think Kansas City is, but Owing to how schedules and how things and teams won, Tennessee got the number one seed, right? Um, so there's still pretty good percentages for the number two seed making it, you know what I mean? And to be quite honest with you, I if I was in the playoffs, I would like to be maybe, maybe a lower seed because now – even though I don't get that week off, I continue to to play, you know, because you, you, you get to the end of the regular season and you're playing well and you're hot and you're in a rhythm. Right. And so all you're doing is just continuing it on because the next game is played next Sunday. That's the wild cards, uh, you know, uh, weekend. Right. If you're the second seed, you're playing or the third seed, you're playing. Right. So I would much yeah, rather well, I be would agree with that. For most teams, the reason I think it'll benefit Tennessee is they yeah, they're going to need yeah, yeah, they'll game. need it uh, by the time they play again. They don't have to use the uh, three back or whatever two back set they've been using, which has been working because the way that they have that line play, yeah, you know, they just run that system. They could they, that's why um, they're able to get it done. But when you have somebody in that to the level of Derrick Henry, even when you don't block for him. He's just going to plow through. Yeah, you don't need to have – yeah, he doesn't even need so, uh, It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> uh, so, but, but the thing I like with Tennessee over Kansas City goes back to the defense, but as a whole because their offense falls when it needs to click the most because their – Brian Tannehill is the guy that then needs to step up compared to Patrick Mahomes. That That's why I would then still favor the Chiefs to come out of the AMC because if their running game's not going – you really need to get a big game out of the rest of the offense with Tanny. All right, All right. Well, let me throw this at you. Stop Henry, or at least not stop Henry. Not right, Henry. I'm with you. Let, let me throw this at you, right? So you put Patrick Mahomes on Tennessee. Tennessee would probably win the Super Bowl because they have a pretty good – they have a better defense than Kansas City. <laughs> That's what I mean, right? And they have Derrick Henry. Yeah, they That's would what I mean. They would so if you, gave, if you gave Patrick Mahomes a better defense and a better running game, he would be winning the Super Bowl. Well, I also don't think Kansas City would even be like what was Kansas City? Kansas City is probably the fourth. Kansas City would probably not be second with if if you flip because if they just had a no, they're second. No, 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 they're second. Now they are. I'm saying oh, 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 Patrick Mahomes and had an average run of the mill like Cousins. No, if they had Tannehill, if they had Tannehill, yeah, they would probably be. They could potentially still make it, but they would not be a top two seed. The same team, exactly. Yeah, so they would probably be like the sixth, fifth, maybe fourth. Like they exactly. would, they would be able to potentially make it, but they wouldn't be the same team. They would make it more because of their system than their quarterback at that point. Where they're making it more because they have, yeah. a system, but their quarterback's able to do whatever the heck he wants to do at the right. same time. Basically. So you think? So you think Tennessee, even though they're not favored, you like them coming out of the AFC to Tennessee? Well, I like no, I like Tennessee, I think, a little bit more than you because I don't trust the Chiefs' defense when push comes to snub. So if anyone is able to limit their offense, that's going to – I, yeah. 
really, yeah. really uh, hurt that team compared to Tennessee, who would be able to kind of keep it at like a 14-14 game. And yeah. then you just have to see who can get okay. the 21 first or a 21-21 right. game, see yeah. you if you get the 28 first. I don't see the Chiefs being as good at doing that. But that's the only reason why I like them a little bit more than you. If I had to rank, I would go Chiefs. And then I would say if they can um, – the Tennessee and Buffalo's kind of even just because Buffalo yeah. is their offense. Uh, yeah, okay. Good defense, but yeah. Tennessee has the best running back in football other than maybe yeah. Jonathan Taylor. And yeah. then they uh, have – who's not in the postseason, unfortunately. Thank you, Carson Wentz. Uh, yeah, right. but, but I think um, Buffalo's defense, though, is better than – than what people are, are giving a lot of credit to. I think Buffalo's defense is definitely better than Kansas City's. Oh, it's 100% better than – and I would yeah. say it at least equals with Tennessee. Yeah, okay, right. That, that would uh, yeah. Even yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, I, right. It's just if they're able to just pound the rock with Henry yeah. and have the good enough passing from Tannehill, I could see them easily getting to that championship game at least um, there. But it, but it's all going to depend how it shakes out. Um, yeah. All right, this, so now – now we got to do the NFC, and quite frankly, I think it's Green Bay's to lose. That's the one I do think the first place team might actually be because Aaron Rodgers played through injury this year and played and, very well. And, and, and yeah, had his slot receiver go out. I'm pretty sure linemen were out for a couple games. Yeah, and yep. still played very well. That his left line, tackle was out almost the whole season. He's yeah, getting exactly. back this left, week. Blind side too. So you you that's, that's even I mean. worse. So. Um, he played tremendously. Uh, he could be the MVP back-to-back years. Uh, having that quarterback play, and they're also a team that has probably a better defense than they're not talked about for because they they're an offense first team. That's like, true. They don't have a great defense, but they don't have a putrid defense. They're not like the Chiefs. That's true. But the That's Chiefs true. are all offense dependent, and then their defense is just blitzing at times, and then they're screwed. And Tyron Matthews not making a Olympic catch over somebody like, yeah, but that's so, so true though, but it's so true. You know what I mean? It's, that's just exactly how it is. You know what I mean? And so, uh, I, if you, if it had, if it couldn't be green Bay though, who do you got Tampa Bay? I would say, um, yeah, I would say it has to be, um, Tampa, which the sneaky team, though, from the NFC for me is definitely L.A. Because of Odell and how him and Stafford. Yeah. Have, like, Stafford has already been good with the rest of the bunch. He's always yeah. been good with tight ends. The sneaky team for me in the NFC is definitely L.A. But I agree. Uh, I would have to put, because of the Brady effect, uh, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In second, but I would say L.A. has the better offense on paper than the Bucs now because they lost Godwin's out. Antonio Brown is uh, not there. And then Le'Veon Bell was a good name, but he's not Le'Veon Bell anymore. So, like, right. so uh, you, you, you need to be able to see what they're able to do uh, yeah. in that game with just Mike Evans and Gronk kind of as the uh, guys in the first playoff game against the Eagles and then go from there because I think L.A. is definitely – uh, a sleeper team, whether sleeper team, well, the AFC is probably because of the quarterback we aforementioned earlier, probably the Bengals. Most of yeah. Who just has yeah. a factor to them where you know, just find I, Will in a way, basically. I'd have to agree with you on that. I, I'd have to agree with you on that. The yeah, Bengals. he has like Peyton Manning, the Brady, the, um, yeah. the, the overall X factor that uh, is able to just put you over the next hump to always kind of find a way for you to win. That's why I would say they're probably the sleeper uh, team for the AFC. But I think that pretty much, as Pirlo would say, our wonderful friend from Canada, wraps up our full 42 as we gave you a lot of stuff on the NHL and a lot of stuff on the NFL. Um, Steele, I'll turn it over to you to say where you can find all your great stuff um, right now. Yeah, man. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for tuning in to the JP and Steel show, man. I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, I, I like how we're rolling with this, man. We just we just talk about the top stories of the day. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to cover all the majors, 
but we are covering all the major s- stories in, in sports. And it's a great time for all, uh, everybody to sit back and just kind of chill and, and relax and just listen to uh, some some great sports talk here with uh, with the great pro Joe. Um, check that out for sure. You can find us on uh, online at www.steelflyers.com. Uh, you can find all the great work there by all the great people on the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, from Hockey Writers Inc. to Off the Wall Hockey to uh, Peyton on the Radio to Perlo, uh, and of course to the great Pro Joe. Thank you all very much for watching. You can find me on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. Thanks for watching the JB and Steel Show. How can we find you, Joe? Where can we get all your stuff? Yeah, you can find me. I write articles on Flyers Nitty Gritty, of course, on Steel Flyers, and that's the Sports Fanatic News YouTube page that I upload the raw Skype version of our show to and do a bunch of different hockey, football, baseball, mostly content um, on there. So please subscribe over there, as well as JJ Bora 26 is mostly where I check. I'm on Twitter if you reach out to me on there. Thank you all for joining us, and please continue to subscribe over at Steel Flyers, as well as, obviously, at Sports Fat News, Off the Wall Hockey, Pure Low Wisdom, and also Peyton on the radio. And then, of course, Hockey Writers, Inc. If you subscribe to Steel, that's where you're going to get that show at and hear them from the great Lance Green, who also writes for Flyers and Integrity. So. Hey, what do you know? It's like a pattern. So thank you all very much for checking out the JB and Steel Show. We'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks, everyone.